Hello! So today in Microsoft Flight Simulator we have got the India Fox Teco Panavia Tornado sat on the ground at Edwards Air Force Base in the US. And we've got the appropriate colour scheme for this kind of environment on the aircraft. So what we're going to do today is work through the startup procedure from cold and dark with the tornado and we're going to do everything ourselves. We're not going to use any of the automated features. So we're going to configure the aircraft. There are two provisos to this. We have got some custom keyboard shortcuts that we'll be using, and I've documented those. I'm going to be following a checklist that will be available. There'll be a link in the notes of the video and as a first pinned comment. And also the second proviso is in order to get the navigation systems working in the aircraft, at the moment you can't program a flight plan directly into the aircraft. So you have to go via the map screen in Flight Simulator and either program a route into that map screen or load a flight plan prepared elsewhere into the map screen, which then pre-programs it into the master computer, the navigation computer of the tornado. Okay, so let's go and jump inside the aircraft and see how we get on. So I'm going to work through my own checklist. As I said, there will be a link to it to download in the notes of the video. First things first then, we go and click on the heatsink underneath the head-up display, and we go and select the ground crew commands, and we want to toggle the external electrical power, get rid of the menu, and we can cancel that alarm. So that results in a truck outside of the airplane over there plugged in, providing power to the aircraft. So the first thing we can do after getting power to the aircraft is go and switch the hydraulic switches, which are hidden behind this lamp, to the middle setting, which is auto. Okay, so then we can go down to the rapid takeoff I think it's called that the rapid takeoff panel so it's hidden behind the yoke uh, sorry the yoke this the um, the stalk that the joystick is on so it's this ru this bank of switches which is all like the master power switches for everything around the airplane so you could do them individually by hand or you can throw this lever which mechanically lifts them all so we'll do that and it just lifts them all and drops down again okay so once we have done that that's the rapid takeoff panel. We go to the right hand side and we go to the environment section and we're looking for the air system master switch, which is just here. We turn that on and then we come over and turn the nav lights on. If this all seems a bit higgledy piggledy, I'm actually following the real procedure, so don't complain to me. So then the um, in the rear cockpit we go Alt and 6 as I've programmed it to, for a custom view and again it's a bit problematic because the co-pilot's in here so we have to kind of work around him. So on the right hand side of the rear cockpit you've got the UHF radio and you switch it to TR plus G which stands for transmitter, receiver and guard receiver. Okay so back in the front cockpit we're going to go to the left side and turn the oxygen on. And then on the right side, we're going to go and turn the anti-collision lights on. And then back on the left side again. And again, it's, uh, yeah, no apologies. We're going to go and turn on the, the APU. So we've connected the APU, but we haven't actually connected, you know, or started it for the aircraft. So we flick the switch, the APU comes on and we get power from the APU to the aircraft. We also then have to go and flick this X-Drive switch to move it to auto. Then on the right side, we can now turn the generators on because we have power to the aircraft. So the generators are here. It's not obvious that these fail lights are lit up at the moment because there's no generators on. So if we go and switch them on, you can see they actually do go more dull. Obviously that's much easier to see in the dark. So then we can close the canopy. So we go and push the lever forwards on the right side of the cockpit and the canopy comes down. It's really nicely modelled and it comes down smoothly and clunks into place and locks and seals. So then we, can, we go over to the left side of the instrument panel and you've got the radar altimeter over here. So you roll the mouse wheel down on this knob on the left bottom left corner and it switches on the radar altimeter. If you want to test it, you can move the marker here and it starts warning if that's beyond the altitude you're, you know, if the needle is at. Um, so what is next? Alright, we're going to get some big acronyms coming up. 
the ESRRD, it's the E-Scope Radar Repeater Display. So this is a copy of the radar display that appears in the back of the aircraft. So we move that to test for the moment. And in a few moments that will come up with some lines on it when it's booted up. So we won't wait for that too long. So let's go and look at the head-up display controls. We can put the head-up display on the directional mode. Again, it will take a while. It's come up, look, already. That's pretty quick. So then on the right-hand side, we're going to go to the Tekan section. So let me just get my bearings here. Tekan's over here. We want to move the mode of Tekan to um, TR, and it's the labels just behind the knob over there. So on the engine control section, we need to move the TBT switch to datum. This is to do with establishing temperatures, but sort of um, setting a, a calibrated, um, how would you put it? It's, it's pre-setting the temperatures basically for the engine control system. Then the IFF system, so if we look over the other side, we need to put the, the master mode on that to standby. Again, a lot of this isn't actually fully operational because there's no weapon systems modelled. But it's, it's all, all the switches and everything work, so you can model, you know, working through procedures. Okay, uh, we've done the IFF, so then the terrain following, same kind of story really. So terrain following radar is here. We can turn it on to standby, but it won't really do much as far as I'm aware. I don't think it's got uh, a terrain following system modelled in the aircraft. Okay, so back to the instrument panel, we can calibrate the altimeter, so it's over here. If I press B on the keyboard to shortcut that, you can see it just slightly. And then we're going to go to another acronym, the RPMD, the Repeater Projected Map Display, that's this. We're going to move it to mode T on the knob at the bottom left. And now we're going to start our first engine. So we go to the engine start switch, which is down here, and we flick it to the left and the engine will start to spin up and we move the throttle away from shut off with our throttle lever and you'll see the RPM start to climb here on the left engine. It will appear to happen quite slowly at first but when you get to about 20% it will ignite the fuel, the um, exhaust gas temperature will go through the roof. There we go. And if we look outside you can see that happening. There's the heat pouring out of the back of the aeroplane. So once the engine's up and running, it will obviously start generating electricity through the generators itself. So it will take over from the APU. You can see the APU light has actually started flashing. So that will, the APU will shut off automatically at the point that the engine's generating enough electricity to do it itself. So just wait for that for a few seconds. Okay. So after starting the first engine, we're going to go back into the heatsink and go back to ground crew and toggle the connection okay. of the APU to the aircraft so it's now disconnected. Then we go down to the left side of the aircraft and we can advance the wing sweep. If we look outside, you can see it'll be quite slow, but it's, it's happening there. And then we can go to the primary flight controls and just make sure things are working so we can move things around and you can see the hydraulics are working by moving the control surfaces around. Okay, so then we're going to start the second engine. So we come back over here and we click on this to go to the right and we advance the throttle out of shutoff for the right engine and you'll see the RPM coming up slowly there. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, we can jump into the back cockpit now. So I'm going to press the keyboard combination to go back there. We're going to switch the TVs on on each side. So these buttons do light up, but it's difficult to see in broad daylight. So you can just see a flash of light there, and he put his hand in the way just in time, didn't he? So that you won't see anything on them for a while. So don't worry about that. So then we're going to go to the the right rear instrument bank, so we're going to have to work our way around this pilot who's in a perfectly bad position for us. So the first thing we're going to look at is the master computer, and we're going to set, turn the IFU switches to one, 1 and 2 to on, we're going to put the wave generator to on, and we're going to turn the master computer main power switch to on. 
Okay. So nothing will happen that for, with that for a while. You don't really get to see anything going on with it. So while we're waiting for that, we can come back down the cockpit. We've got plenty more to do. There's the SAHR panel here. It stands for Secondary Attitude and Heading Reference Section. They love that acronyms, don't they? We need to rotate the knob on this to free. Just wait for a few moments and it will come up with some numbers and it says fast direct sync. That will go out eventually. So after doing that, we go forwards to the INCDU. Now that's this panel here. It doesn't actually say it on it though. So this is where you would normally program the flight plan into the aircraft. Obviously, we know it doesn't work, so that's why we've loaded it in via the map screen in the simulator. But we can at least move the switches to the correct positions. So the, the bottom left switch, the align switch, should go to norm. The middle switch should go initially to IPI. The reason it goes to IPI is IPI stands for Initial Position Insertion. So this is where you would be programming in your place in the world. Obviously we're not going to be doing that because the aircraft is it's, it's simulated and it's not quite full fidelity yet. So then after you've done all of that programming in the real thing you would then go to nav mode. And it, the numbers change up here and who knows what all these status numbers mean. Okay so after doing that we can go forwards on the right hand side and you've got this panel here called the RDE MDE panel or Rapid Data Entry panel. So we roll this around to data entry and we move it to start and the numbers start coming up. So if we then come back into the, the rear cockpit, you can see some of the screens have already come on, which is quite interesting. They really shouldn't have. I was saying RDE complete, there we go. So we're kind of racing the aircraft here to get things done. So we can change the mode on the navigation system. So we can say we want plan mode on this side maybe and nav mode on that side. And I'm not going to get into what these screens do or how they work because I'm not sure myself yet. I just know how to switch them on. <laughs> OK, after dealing with everything in the back of the aircraft, we can go to the front of the aircraft. Actually, before we do that, let's just come back in here. Do we actually, does this do anything? This is the radar. I'm not sure that it actually does anything yet. So we'll come back into the front of the aircraft. So we're going to go to the ESRRD screen, the radar screen down here, and its mode should be to... Oh, sorry, uh, again, it's wrong myself now. The radar screen is this one. So it needs to go to repeater. So it's showing the radar from the back of the aircraft. Obviously, like I said, there's nothing to show. So then we can go to our nose wheel steering next. So we're getting near to taxiing. So there's a little indicator light behind here. You need to map a button to do this. You can toggle it between low turn rate, high turn rate, and no nose wheel steering. So all we'll need is low for taxiing around normally. If you were inside a hangar trying to turn, for example, you'd want it on high. OK. So we've got the nose wheel steering configured. We can check our brakes. We can essentially get ready to fly now. So what we're going to do is turn the head tracking on so I can look around now. I'll remove the parking brakes. I'll have a look outside. It's our tornado. And we're essentially ready to taxi. So we'll taxi out and go as far as taking off, and then I'll end the video for today. So we'll put the flaps to first position, which is the low flaps, I believe. So the flap lever in the Tornado works a little bit differently than normal. They've tried to combine it and simplify it. So it acts as wing sweep as well. So yeah, you can see it's done it here. So various detents of your, of your flap lever will control the wings and the flaps at the same time. So we've got 
got the, the wings fully forward, flaps down, and we're nearly ready. So we're just making our way around to the runway. You need to be careful with taxiing speed as you just saw, because if you go too fast the nose wheel steering will disable. Which we've just caused by accident I think. There's two F15Cs parked here, look. Very cool. Okay, there's another key you can map to do the afterburner in much the same way as the F-18 within the simulator. So once you're on the runway, you're pretty much good to go at this point. So we can just go for full throttle. If you've got an afterburner button mapped, you can go press it. I've just pressed and look at it accelerate. Rotate. Gear up. Disable the afterburner. And sweep the wings. there you go, there's the basic start-up procedure for the Tornado. It's quite involved, but it's not insurmountable. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I'll upload it to, I'll upload the, um, the instructions along with the video to YouTube, so you can download them. It's worth me pointing out, it, it's taken me hours to distill it, the instructions and to crib from the, the procedures that came with the aircraft. So if you would like to buy me a coffee off the back of it, I would really appreciate it. Okay, I'll see you again soon. Take care.